Hello and welcome back to VFX with Natron. So today is an interesting day. Today we're going to be talking about space. It's that black stuff. Oh wait, no, not that space. That's outer space. We're going to be talking about the space where rainbows exist. Color space. And uh, color space is uh, an interesting thing. And today is supposed to be an open discussion, so I'm going to be focusing more on people who come in and ask questions regarding this. Um, one way or another, I'm not positive uh, we will have anybody who will join in and talk about this. But it's there just in case. Um, this is a little more informal uh, because it's about theory. I'm going to switch Mondays to be more uh, theory-based and... Uh, talking about things so with uh out deviating too much more let's uh get into natron all right so over here in natron i already have up um several uh things here and uh most people have probably heard uh of this thing called color space and i'm like well what the heck is a color space uh you think, uh, you know, every, as we said earlier, outer space, everybody knows outer space. That's where, you know, we, it's a place between planets and stars and it's outside of our atmosphere. Anyhow, uh, color space is a bit different. It's, um, it's, well, let's, let's first talk about this thing. There's this, uh, thing called, um, uh, oh, the CIE and they're basically, they, came into existence to study color and um they were observing uh they created uh this thing in 1931 called the c e or c r e 1931 color space which is uh, we we refer to it as the x y z color space and um just if you really want to know more about that um, there is information and or we should be able to find it at this website here. This is a, a, a YouTube video. If you follow this URL, um, you can see more additive and display it, systems it, such as television video. It's simulate short, color but, appearance um, by combining red, to, green, to and blue the primaries. Thing here. Um, uh, you can go and watch it on your own. I'll post a link to it in in uh, the description here uh, at a later point. Um, but one of the things that we need to know regarding uh, it is that they created this thing called uh, XYZ uh, color space. And a lot of people go, XYZ, aren't we thinking RGB? Well, RGB is something that you really came into uh, th the thought process when people became more aware of when they started dealing with trying to reproduce color on things like televisions and uh, on um, on monitors eventually um, but also on the other things like uh, printers and and whatnot so um, in 1931 they created this thing this little lovely chart uh, and this is actually uh, what's called the normalized cube. Um, by normalized, it's uh, this is luminance based. All right. So right here we have um, this value system that's going from zero and it goes all the way up. It stops up here uh, at point 0.9. It doesn't even get to point 0.9. But this is the Y value. This is a luminance value. Y is the luminance uh, intensity. Um, then X and Z are these... Um, values of you know uh, brightness versus saturation um so to speak it's a, a, a color intensity and uh, we, what we usually look at this is when this is normalized out into this quote horseshoe as people have referred to it uh, or it gets referred to in the the video um this horseshoe is uh uh, normalize it's 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 it takes on the shape because they they've weighted it to fit into the the cube down into this flat space and these are the maximum saturation values so the these are the absolute most saturated values 
every eye on the planet can see. And what XYZ is, this isn't actually XYZ. This is inside of XYZ. This is the garment of all perceivable colors that we know of. Um, this exceeds every uh, detectable human, uh, every human on Earth, ha their eyes see something. Every device, everything that sees color or produces color creates it within this spectrum. Or at least that's what we believe. Um, anyhow, the XYZ color space is uh, encompasses, it's a, the series of points that encompass this entire cube of space, of, of volume of color. And um, when we're dealing with it, the problem is, is that nothing, no two things, or well, in theory, some things are supposed to, but re in reality, nothing is 100% exactly the same as anything else. Um, they're similar, but they are not 100% guaranteed to be 100% accurate. Even two monitors, I have two monitors that are identical. Oops, I bumped my mic. Um, I have two monitors that are very identical for color matching purposes, but they are different. They, despite being the same brand and having being designed for cinema purposes, uh, they don't display color the exact same way. Um, and so, uh, and they also, they don't cover this entire color garment. Um, or like, whoop, I used a term here that, that we haven't really talked about. So let's see, let's first look at an example. We, if you've seen this, everybody's seen this. Um, the best way to look at this is when you hear the term X, Y, Z, that's usually referring, uh, it's usually refers to from the standpoint of color, everything that's inside of this. There's actually things that can go outside of this value, but this is more or less X, Y, Z color space. There are some other color spaces that exist within it. So if we go to this next thing, you've probably seen when you, you open up a, uh, or see a picture of this, somebody points out this, this triangle inside of this. And what this triangle actually is, this is the garment. This is a, oh, here, we'll, I'll have a thing called the garment down here. Oops, that's not the garment. That's garment. This is talking about two different garments. We have garment A, garment B. Um, but you'll notice that A, which is here, and B, here, are two different shapes. They're bit one. B is clearly bigger than A. Um, and that these are color spaces. Um, out of all the possible colors that can be seen or can be reproduced um whatever has garment a which is a smaller triangle is restricted to only either perceiving or picking up that or displaying uh that and uh you can have uh and that's that's one of the tricky things about it is that there are three aspects of garment you have, uh, at least when it comes to uh, computers, you have uh, your camera, whatever picks up or creates the um, the the image, um, if it's if it's uh, being picked up from reality, from like this, my camera right here has a color garment, and um, it is the range of everything that the sensor on this, and they may call it something other than garment, but it's all garment it's all within this it is the the maximum values of it um anyway oh uh, the garment of this uh, it, it has it can only pick up reds up to a certain redness and greens up to a certain greenness and blues up to a certain blueness that's why when you look at pictures on your television or on your computer monitor they don't look like reality because your your television and your monitor can't reproduce all the colors of reality it's just not possible plus there's other things that come into play as well which are perspective and things like that but you don't have all the colors so that's why you have this little space so um this raises a question well there's also 
another aspect of this, which is you have the camera can has a goal net or a, a, this range that it picks things up. But then you have your computer works in a color space. We work in what's called linear color space in Nitron. Um, and but linear color space is different. We, we, we've we talked about this thing called gamma curve and Linear color space means that everything, all the colors are produced in a direct line. There's a lu the luminance as in this direct zero to one. But our eyes perceive things differently. And it, we, we perceive things in more of a logarithmic curve where it takes, when we view things, they get more, uh, the brighter things are, the greater the intensity, the greater the, the, the value difference has to be in order to see a perceivable uh, change in brightness. So what that means is that at lower values or darker values, we, want, we are more sensitive to, or our eyes are more sensitive to details. So we see more, it takes less of a, a distance. And so we need to, they ramp it up as it goes up into the uh to create the brightness and so forth so um but that's that's part of color space so um this is pretty much this gets us into the core thing so the question the th first thing we need to know about xyz color space is it's not it does not line up exactly with RGB. We can see that. What these triangles are, are the RGB values. These are the maximum saturation RGB values. Each corner of, of the, this triangle represents the R, the R, the G, and the B of that. And then this would be the white area where they come in. But you can see that the bottom line, the difference between here and here, it doesn't exactly line up with X, which is kind of over here. Um, and why it goes up going up this is by the way this it's it's i don't want to get into that um yes we just you just need to know that this, this it's not a one-to-one -one ratio so you said to yourself well when you transfer between one color space and another color space we shift there's another aspect of this okay let's say that a is srgb okay that is what the standard computer colors is the color range of your typical computer monitor and your typical computer graphic card um at least in theory uh, it operates in that and so when it trend it selects um a bunch of colors now there's billions and billions and billions of colors out there more colors than than or your computer can display and um at any given time and the problem we run into is that um if it's the most computers when computers started displaying things that were photorealistic in the early days this was considered eight bits per channel which meant 24 bit color or if you included an alpha channel it was uh, a total of 32 bits it was eight bits eight bits eight bits eight bits of red eight bits of green eight bits of blue and then eight bits of of alpha which gave you 256 values for each individual color and we can actually see this um i'm going to go over here to my little subject today uh, which is my old cat she's by the way she's passed on but uh she's still one of my favorite subjects um this is rosie she was a good kitty um and uh she is uh an rgb image and in nitrum we have the ability under our color options there's two ways we can transform color in rgb or in nitrum the first is using the internal transformations so under the color menu under transform we have all the this whole list of, of various things and you can see in here that it says we have X, Y, Z to something or RGB to something. And you'll notice that there's these RGB 709s. Well, 709 is a television where color space. It's actually 709 is high definition color, uh, is the high definition color, um, color space. 
uh, for high HDTV. And low definition or standard definition television was what was called 601. We can see 601 down here. We have a, this is to Waxy Y, C, B, C, R, uh, excuse me, Y, C, B, C, R, or Y, P, B, P, R. And anyway, those are, we'll get into those in a bit. But there's also other, there's other types of color spaces in there as well. So what are the purposes of these color spaces? Um, whoops, I lost my transforms. All right, uh, let's just say right now, we're looking at our image in RGB, basically. It's sRGB. And um, Natron, you'll see that when we load in our the picture of Rosie here, um, you'll see that this starts off with what's called a file color space. Okay, it means that this image was produced uh, and saved with a predefined color space associated with it. And it, because this is a JPEG image, it would be sRGB. So it says here that the source image uh, here is sRGB. It's a JPEG, sRGB. But Natron, as we've established, does not work in sRGB color space. It works in linear color space. So sRGB has a gamma curve to it, but linear does not. It removes the gamma curve. So it, in Natron, what happens is when we load in a file, it comes in sRGB. Unless it's EXR, EXR does not usually come in as sRGB. EXR usually comes in as linear color space. So be aware of that. No, because that can, if you, if you start... Let's see what happens to Rosie if I switch this to a linear color space, okay? If I tell it that the file is linear, suddenly she looks wrong. The picture looks wrong. And if I switch it back to, from, uh, from, back to uh, sRGB, it looks, again, correct. But if I, I put it, if I change the output color space from this, from sRG, uh, from linear, excuse me, out to natron into sRGB, what happens is it looks wrong again. It looks the same as it did before. So what this tells us is that when we're transforming into the color spaces, if we stay within the color space of, uh, if we keep the input and the output the same, it really doesn't matter what color space we are in. The only problem is, is in if we're going to shift between color spaces we have to know what's coming into a given node if the or if the node can't work with the color space uh, it has to be transformed um so uh we've obviously we've screwed this up we've told it that we want we, we're outputting it into nitron uh, as sRGB, and I can actually view it in Natron up here. I can tell it I want to, uh, instead of looking at it as sRGB, now because it's in sRGB automatically, if I switch this to linear, it actually looks correct. Which you'll say to yourself, well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, it, it actually does, because what's happening is, is we're not really, this, th this, when we switch this to sRGB, what it's doing is it assumes what's coming into the viewer node is in linear color space. And then we're applying a transformation to convert it to sRGB in the viewer. So if we assume it's, if, even though we've outputted it as sRGB here, uh, because uh, Natron's expecting it to come out as linear by switching this to linear in the viewer, we're basically turning off any color transformation in the viewer node, which fixes it. So this, even though uh, it, from our file standpoint, if this is the exact same thing as if I just told it everything was linear from the start. Basically, now we're still operating. All of them are viewing it as linear. But this really isn't a linear file. This was not linear uh, linear color space. So what would happen is, is it would, when we manipulate it, it would manipulate wrong. The colors would get adjusted in a wonky way. So, as I mentioned here um, previously, the cameras have color spaces to them. There's this whole problem that a Sony camera 
and a Canon camera and a Black Magic camera all look different. My, my, this is a Samsung Galaxy. Uh, it's it's not. It doesn't look the same as an Apple iPhone. They none of them look exactly the same. And the problem is that this creates a problem when you're dealing with something like a movie, where you you might have multiple cameras. Um, and usually when you get into cinema cameras uh, and you're working with a, uh, a, a movie, they, they'll have multiple cameras that are the same. Except in the, if you've seen movie cameras or movie cameras like Ari's and Red's and, uh, and Sony's for that matter, you the problem is, is that these things are, can be very big. These are very big. And that's because they have all this stuff that they do inside that is, um, they're designed to take these big, huge lenses that are rated different. Anyway, the problem with this is, is that if I, if you are shooting the vast majority of your movie using one type of camera, this really big camera, and then you need to do something like a motorcycle shot where you need to put this way better GoPro on top of somebody's head. The problem is, is that GoPro doesn't match the look of this other camera. And so this gets into this whole thing called color correction, which we will uh, talk about at another point. But the problem was, is that this created a lot of extra work, especially if you were doing multiple shots. There were these things called A and B cameras, A, B, C, D, however many cameras you had in a given place. That was your what you were working with. So the problem that they ran into is, is that the Academy of Motion Pictures needed to come up with us, wanted to standardize this. Um, and so they came up with with this color space um, called ACES. And ACES is this Academy, I forget exactly what it's, I think it's Academy Engineering Standards Committee or something like that. Anyway, the detail of that doesn't matter. ACES is, um, is this, uh, standard used in the film and the the thing that the reason that they came out with this is, is by when a camera manufacturer produces something and they want their camera to be able to be used in a movie where it's prestigious to be able to say my camera was used in x movie you know the problem they were running to is, is if it can't be calibrated to match the other cameras then you run into uh, problems it makes it more difficult and then camera company or, or movie motion picture companies that have very limited budgets well relatively speaking uh will say oh uh, let's not use that camera because there's not a color profile for it so um ace is the whole idea behind this is that ca companies that make cameras come up with these ACES profiles or these camera profiles. And what you do is you take your camera profile and you pull it in. They say, this is how it transforms into XYZ color space or into the ACES color space. Um, and so um, inside of Natron, we'll notice that in uh, over here, we have this thing over here called linear ACES. Um, and uh, that's our academy engineering standards committee this is uh if you were doing linear aces so if you were working from an aces profile you would have your input color space be your camera and then you would output into aces and the thing that's nice about aces is that if you're working in aces in an aces profile inside of a program um like say natron um, if you're using the same profile in another program in theory and I'm saying that with big quotes, in theory, if you make a gamma adjustment in Natron and you make the same gamma adjustment in Premiere or in in uh, Resolve or, or whatever else, or After Effects, uh, you, in theory, would create the same amount of movement. So the color, the image that came out at the end, should look almost identical. Um, there's a wee bit of difference it doesn't it's not perfect i will tell you that but it's 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 as close as you can get and it gets very 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 close so that's a manipulation space it's it brings it the idea is you bring from your camera color space to your manipulation color space and you've probably seen manipulation color spaces 
Um, sRGB is a form of uh, uh, of manipulation color space. Um, ISIS is a color space. Linear is a color space. Um, we operate in linear uh, inside of Natron. And believe me, believe it or not, if you work in linear and then you work in ISIS, it's it's close. They they work very linear. ISIS is very similar to linear regular linear it's just it's how the things are mapped so we also have to talk about one other thing which is um so then then you have to when you're done you have to output it and the problem is is when you write your files out you will not for the account for aces there's also this idea that you're not outputting it to your to some generic monitor that you don't know they have calibrated monitors they have calibrated cinema projectors um, and calibrated monitors that also support ACES. So there's three parts to this. There's your input color space, your manipulation color space, and your output color space. Your input is usually your camera or your software. Blender has color space. Um, they usually, now, the, the, the I believe they call Filmic is the new logarithmic color space for, for um, Blender. And uh, it's preferred. Then you have your manipulation color space, which in our case is linear or linear aces. And then you have your output color space, which is whatever you're going to be outputting it to, which is, I believe it's called DCI. Um, anyway, I don't, we're, I don't want to dwell too, too, too long. Um, aha. Somebody has, um, Natron works with 32 bits. Somebody has wrote and uh, aces. Yes, it's it has aces in there. Yes, we have aces in Nitron. Um and you can you just need to make sure you're you're working within you know, you're working within the proper color space to to manipulate. Anyway, um I want to also bring up an un, another aspect of this um regarding these these color spaces. Um uh oh boy. Oh uh, we have these transformations. So one of the things that you can see is that we can take RGB and we can, um, we can, so we've, we've brought this in RGB. Um, we'll go into our color. We're going to go over to transform and we'll take our RGB and I'm going to just convert it. Oh, I don't like the fact that uh, to, to, oh, I usually didn't work this way. Um, all right. So we'll say RGB um 709 to xyz all right so i've converted this so, so i've taken this and i've converted it from 709 which this is not a 709 input image um and i've converted it into natron's xyz and by doing that you'll notice that the color shifted in a funny way and uh this is incredibly useful because this changes what types of information we can actually view on our in our channels if you don't know if you're looking at our color here we can go to hitting r changes us to the red channel when we're over our viewer g takes us to our green b takes us to our blue and a takes us to our alpha which this doesn't have an alpha because it's 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 just an image with it's not an, an alpha supported image but when we go when we're looking at an r and we switch to xyz r becomes x g becomes y and uh Z becomes B, um, and this is very, very useful. Not necessarily with X, Y, Z, but when we work with chromatic uh, formats. And what is a chromatic format? Um, a chromatic format, um, let me get out of one of my red. Whoops, no, 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 I was in the wrong spot. Red. Um, if I go in here and I change my color transformation here, uh, to oh, color transform. Um, there's a thing. Uh, let's go RGB to. Ooh. All right. So you have this thing called YCBE CR. Um, okay, and that is we'll go to six oh um to seven. I did seven oh nine, right? Yes, seven oh nine. All right, so you look at this and you say to yourself, what the heck is that? What this is, is it's a chromatic uh, color space. Um, uh, this is actually the color space that color televisions work off of. So color televisions, as you may know, started off uh, originally NTSC was black and white. It had They had a black and white image and they said, how can we add color to it? 
Well, they started off um, with black and white, which if we happen to go here and we look at this, 709 is just the HD version of it. Um, and we hit go to the red channel. We're now looking at the equivalent of this image in black and white on a black and white television. This is what um, is the black channel of of a of a, of a television, basically, or the equivalent um, in a broadcast signal. Um, it, we haven't we we're not we're, we may be exceeding the garment value, by the way. Um, this is a transformation. Hopefully, this has switched, shrunk it within. You'd have to check it on what on a, a waveform monitor to make sure your your color space, your values don't go above or below your uh, output, um, whatever you're outputting to, because there are maximum saturation values, maximum uh, brightness values. Um, this gets very technical, but the point is is that we're looking here at that now this to this what they did is they added uh the, there's these two other channels in it there's this this the g channel which is the cb or or it, which is a c stands for chroma why when you see why in a color space it usually means luminance or the luminance of it and in fact it's the same thing the luminance of the uh, in in X Y Z is the Y is actually a luminance value. Um, there is what's called X Y Y, which is another. Uh, it's an it's a luminance variant of of X Y Z. Um, but the the beauty of this is is that by separating um, this into your separating the color information from the black and white or the luminance variations you can denoise things and you can see artifacting from from things like uh, uh things like jpegs and whatnot and this is actually gets into the whole thing when you see 422 or, or something like that what it's talking about is the four is our red the black and white image this is kept at its purest sense this is the most information uh, the most important information it keeps all the black and white details because it's very imp important but when we get into the red and the 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 excuse me into the uh R, the cr and the cb or the cb in the crs um this is cb excuse me the c yeah cb and this is cr um you'll see that it's it, this looks a lot there's a lot less information here and if we were to look at this actually in a histogram you would find out that this, this this is actually very very limited there's a lot less information here and it actually goes up and down it doesn't translate into rgb very well but from a denoising standpoint it's really useful because we can denoise the r uh, in the uh, or the cb and the cr differently particularly if we uh especially if we treat because we can separate it from the others so um see if i can i'm running longer than i wanted i just want to look at this all right um i'm looking at the blue channel go back here um i want to just quickly make note of one thing there's two ways we can transform color space inside of natron one is with the the transformations inside here we have all these color transformations in here and if you have questions about these and we don't get beyond this i will i can talk about them um lab is is probably one of the more useful ones when you're actually doing it it's a manipulative um color luminance space it's actually a very good one um these the ycbcr and the ypbpr are variations of of what broadcast signals um hsl is hue saturation luminance which is different from hsi hue saturation intensity which is different from slightly different and these are all well they're similar they're different because they different deal with how the saturation is dealt with or where saturation lies on the overall luminance curve um uh, one deals with it at the uh, at the fifty percent gray mark. The other one deals with it at a hundred percent white, um, and then one of them treats it that 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 um, 
the saturation just stays consistent where other ones work from basically a point out to maximum saturation and then back in or work as a pure cone out. That's the difference between these three. Um, that's it. You'd have to say, think of luminance as your, your top to bottom. It goes up and down. Um, and then your, your saturation is going side to side in this, in this kind of circle. Um, and the idea is, well, that gets into another aspect of it. I'd have to bring up, I'd have to bring up something that I was not prepared to bring up. Um, anyway, uh, do we have questions? Yeah, a little bit, ices. All right, so, um, when you're dealing with, when you go to output, if you write, put a writer, whoops, if we were to put a writer node here, and for right now, uh, we're not where I want it to be. We're way off, but that's okay. Uh, it doesn't matter. We'll just put a output for right now. Well, that's good. Um, so we have this output. And uh, when we get to the output, we would want to transform from whatever our, our manipulation color space is to our our output color space now because we i have it set here as a jpeg oops i clicked on something i didn't mean to click on shoot um because i just knocked away that all right because it is in um srg it's a jpeg image uh it's outputting it it's automatically set the file color space to srgb if i go up here and i change this from from oh i hate the output and then put dot exr and uh what to hit that we'll notice that the file color space shifts to um shifts into linear color space which is important to remember just remember whatever file space your color space you're going to be outputting to uh if you go we're going to be outputting so you'll notice here in in this by the way there's there's these input things and there's this display color space when you're dealing with um when you're dealing with uh, ACES and, and stuff like that, I mentioned that there, there, there's this thing called OCIO, okay, which is part of the open standards. This is where uh, part of where ACES exists, all right? And I said there were two ways of dealing with color transformation. Up here, inside of, the, inside of our color transformations, we also have this thing called OCIO, which is the open standards... Uh, version and this is what they actually use and you'll notice that there is this color transform and then there's this this uh, color space and this is a way of also uh, transforming it and this is actually where natron actually does it um natron does its color transforms in here it pulls it in here um and then it it transforms it uh using this but it does it on a per node basis um, but you can do it uh, outside, anywhere else. You can put it here. And one of the nice things about this is we can, using this version, we can actually do the OCIO version of XYZ. We can transform it into, whoa, that looks a wee bit weird. That's just a, a redraw bug. All right. So this is the OCIO XYZ. And uh, if I connected this here, let's just look at the two. They are they the same? They look actually like they are putting the same thing, which didn't at one point always work. This is good. Let me make sure I'm looking at this correctly. I'll put oh well no, that's why. Well file color space was not uh, whoops, wait a minute, let me run output linear. Input is SRGB. There we go. Alright. So, and, oh yes, we're going to be switch this to sRGB up here. There. Now, if I go here, this is what XYZ looks like in Natron. And this, all right, so they are using the same transformation now. They were at one point. They, Natron did its own funny thing when it did it. Um, which probably means this is within it. If you did a full range sRGB, yeah, one of these, this one would actually misrepresent it whereas this one will actually transform the entire color space correctly from uh rgb srgb full range to uh s to xyz that would be the big difference between using um this form using the ocio um 
the 709 tr transfer uh, color space assumes that you're dealing with a video format that was uh, recorded off of something like a standard HD camera or something like this phone. Most your most cell phones record in a um, in a color space, uh, a 709 color space, unless you're shooting with something like RAW, much my my cinema camera records in. I have a black magic camera I like record in. Um, so that's what color, that's what that aspect of color space is. Um, so this is all useful. It's all useful from the standpoint of transformation. It's all about getting something getting things to come in, manipulate and output within these, you know, garments. Um, and every, as I say, everything has a garment. Remember this. So let's say your camera has a garment of A. Your computer, your computer, technically, depending on your, your, your device, um, can have a different types of things. If your computer supports 10-bit uh, color, you have... Uh, you 10 bit color can do more potential colors. Um, let's say here's another thing about it. Let's say A is sRGB and B what say Adobe. Uh, these are two different color spaces. What this means is is that the 16.7 million colors of standard 8 bit um, RGB color space, when it gets stre stretched out, all color spaces are really are forms of color palettes there are the, this here represents a it's very much like a color palette your standard index color but except for with index colors you're dealing in fact let's do something here that should be interesting let's put on a quantize node in here um color quantize where's that quantize node there we go um we're going to quantize that and the reason we're going to quantize it is because quantize reduces the colors to 16. All right. We're limiting the color palette, but we're still, when we switch the color space, what we're saying is, is the range of that color palette of, of those pe pe uh, colors that exist in that color palette are existing within a predefined range of go color garment. All right. So, um, here, whoops, uh, here, the, uh, we took something that had more colors and we stretched, we reduced it in colors to 16 colors per channel, but then we stretched it out amongst the X, Y, in this case, the X, Y, Z color space out to fill in wherever that this happens to be for 709. All right. Which I don't have a diamond up here. Could be a, could be B. It's probably closer to B. Um, and there's other color spaces as well. There's there's 2020, which is the new um, color space for dealing with uh, HDR and so forth. If you want to know more about a given a specific color space, you should really look it up on the internet. Um, and I highly recommend looking at the 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 video I, I will be linking um, that I showed earlier at the beginning of it. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's any color comments or questions at this point. Is this something somebody wants to know about this? Please just ask your questions. I'm looking at the thing. It's going to take a second before people actually have an opportunity to respond. And if people don't want to watch any more of this, they don't have to. I want to continue this one for just a wee bit longer. Because I think there's more... There's almost a side of me that wishes this, we should do this in Zoom, really. Um, do people have specific questions about color space that they want to know that they don't think I might have covered? Or have I made, have I confused the issue? I hope I haven't confused the issue. Um, but if you think of them as color palettes, um, index colors though one of the things in earlier days is when you had limited when computers had more limited colors they had a specific set of colors so they indexed them you didn't have per channel colors um if you did one of the things about the quantize now that's interesting is is when we reduce it, uh, colors to 16 colors these are still uh, there is colors per, per channel 
Um, these are not, I think it's actually 16 colors per channel or per, per each thing. So instead of having 256, we're only dealing with 16 for a total of what, 16, 16, 16. I don't even want to think. Uh, uh, I'm not going to do the math in that um, off the top of my head. But if we bring this down to, say, two colors, all right, um, or even, whoops, it won't even do one. Uh, we got an error here. Oh, that's easy to fix. Oak. Um, so we have two colors per channel, all right? What that means is if I go into my uh, red channel here, you can see that I'm just dealing with black and white. There's just two colors of red. There's either black or there's red. Um, if I go to my green channel, I have either black or green. And if I go to my blue channel, I either have black or blue. And then what it does is, depending on where these overlap, you either wind up with one of the combinations of those. Um, and so we wind up with... Uh, oops. Uh, we're in blue... Yeah. We wind up with something that looks more like this. And then we could we could add in some form of dithering to our, our thing. Um, we could add in an ordered bear, and then it reproduces a, 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 a by combining uh, patterns of our image, it recreates recre small pixels of our, our our image using that. So we wind up with something that looks like uh, what a printer does with uh, its colors so printers and and monitors work off of additional additives color space whereas printers work off of subtractive and what additive means basically is additive works from black to white uh, subtractive works from white to black paper is, starts off at white uh, at excuse me paper works starts off at white and then you add inks that rem basically remove this reflected color it basically they absorb color and so what you by absorbing a color you wind up reflecting all the other colors other than what was absorbed so when you see red it's absorbing everything but red um off of a piece of paper whereas in with light you when you add the color you're actually adding pure red so if you put something if you were projecting red, projecting red light, and then you had something that could absorb it perfectly, you would not see anything reflect off of it, and that thing would disappear in reality, but and quote be stuff, so to speak. Um, like what is called venturi black or whatever. Um anyway, oh we're running way long, way, way long. I was hoping that somebody would ask more uh have comments questions um if there's more that you want to know about color spaces and so forth um ask uh ask online i will happily talk about this more it's a complicated uh subject just to remember that color space is basically a gigantic palette that um varies um and that the different color spaces are just these different the X, Y, Z is this big horseshoe, and these uh, these garments of color spaces are the various things, like, for example, sRGB or Adobe or, you know, my monitor or my camera or whatever, um, relative to another thing. And it's a way of viewing how all the colors relative to them. And then, knowing this, we stretch out our color palettes with inside of that. So... Uh, the big problem you face is that if you're limited, if we only had 16 colors, A is actually, if we only had 16 colors per channel, A is a better option because we'd actually want, be able to encompass more of A than we would be to re, uh, cover more of B with our, if we were limited in how many colors we could do. So a lot of times this is what uh, comes gets into part of the co concept of color compression in and so forth is and actually you know what i think our next video might actually i'm going to do a color compression we're going to compress them on our next on friday we're going to co compress something visually into we're going to compress rosie into oh i love it we're going to turn her 
into two pixels and then I'm going to turn her back into a full color image in front of your eyes. Ha ha ha. Doesn't that sound exciting? That's going to be awesome. Uh, that's going to, it's just a wonderful tech, trick. Anyway. All right. Enough of that. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, catch you next time.